That's amazing. Oh, thank God. Don't touch me. What's that wire? No, ah! no don't scream. I can't breathe. Please, I can't breathe. I'll take my hands away if you stop screaming. Have you calmed down now? You... You're the second bomber! Please listen to me. I didn't choose. I, I didn't even want to do this. What the hell does that mean? We don't have time for this right now. It's supposed to go off in exactly 20 minutes. Oh, here, in this packed hotel. No, not in this hotel. I had to come here to get off the street to clear my mind. All oh, those police outside. Oh, God. Me. Maureen, Pat, just decoys, just, just, just innocent people caught up in this madness. We're all innocent people caught up in this madness. He had keys. Where? We need to get out of here fast. What do you mean we? You're coming with me. I need you. For now, anyway. Well, I could just make a run for it. And I could just press this button. To, to live in the bus was to me always a daily adventure and when we stopped and camped somewhere I was in a, a natural playground and I absolutely loved it and the bus offered me that way of life. This is the story of Jess Smith, a settled gypsy traveller. I'm Jack Ferguson and I'm going on a journey to discover a culture that stretches back generations that of the Wanderers. I remember the day my father dro drove it on to Walker's Field in Putlockery. Her father had just bought his family a 1948 Bedford bus that Jess lived on for the next 10 years with her parents and seven sisters, living a life always on the move. But the bus came in to the campsite and right away I recognised the driver as my dad. And he got out and he lifted my mother by the elbows and he says, Jeannie, I've brought you a mansion. But I enjoyed my childhood because I was, I was not restricted in any way, shape or form. And then if we stopped at a place where there was old ruins, old castle ruins, I was the queen of that castle. My imagination was free to roam. Chapter 8 Angry, well-dressed doorman. Summer, fall, 2012. The next afternoon, I walked into Cabaret International. It was different. The girls were huddled up by the back wall. Some new owner bought the club. The same people who owned Rachel, supposedly. The Vigels. They already own the shithole dollhouse directly across the street, but that dive could never compete with Cabaret. They immediately fired all of the DJs. The cute girls I was there for and half the other girls were already gone. It was half empty. The way it worked at Cabaret was the DJ was the point of contact for the girls. He is the one they would go to if they got sick and had to leave early. He is the one they would have to pay their house fee to at the end of the night. Only 10 or $15, if I remember correctly, and tip out if they had a good night. This is how it worked at Club Madonna, at all Italian-owned clubs, and at pretty much all the clubs I went to. Except maybe Tootsie, which was too big. I was told Cabaret was owned by an Italian family, with a C, like Canonico or something. And supposedly they sold Cabaret International to the Vigels for north of a million and still owned a strip club in Coco. The DJ being the point of contact for the strippers supposedly originated in the early 1990s. A DJ named Tony Galeota started recruiting his own girls for Playmates Pompano. Club owners are businessmen who know how to get liquor licenses. DJs are cool, and they can do things club owners can't, like know what music is popular, sell cocaine, who knows. There was one DJ in particular at Cabaret, the main DJ, whom the prettier girls were very close to. 
He was a cool guy for his age, but very square-looking and kind of a father figure. I don't know if he was having sex with the strippers. He liked the girls so much, my guess is he did have sex with them. What else would he be in it for? Now he was gone, and the girls he was close to, the cute girls, quit the same day. I never saw any of them again. With all of the girls gone, I was reduced to coming into Cabaret each week to check for cute girls, the same as I had at Club Madonna. It is wrong to just sit and watch girls dance without spending any money. And it's insulting to do it for 10 or 20 minutes and then leave. But I also learned the hard way that you can't just tip random girls in Orlando. They get the wrong idea. The next time you come in, they won't leave you alone. And they will punch other girls who try to talk to you. It takes a month to shake them off. On the last day, you were the one who gets punched for leading them on the day you tipped them and then dumping them. Just a second. Oh, hey. What's up? (laughs) Are you shaking? Uh, it's okay. Come on, get inside. We can sit on my bed. That's it. I'll sit next to you. Here, you can lean on me. What's going on? Well, it's clearly not... Nothing. Look, I'm not gonna make you talk about it, but I'm here, okay? Hey, it's alright. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's... The storm? Wait, no, don't apologize. I didn't say it like that because it's a bad thing. It just surprised me. Is it the loud noises? The thunder? Okay. I think I understand. How can I help? I have been kind of a Debbie Downer on this podcast because I don't like much. You know, Um, I'm real particular with my movies. I get real picky with them, you know, and if I don't like the story or whatever, I just walk away sour and like, ah, it was great. But I say that to say I went into this with very low expectations. I just, <laughs> all, with the pushbacks and it being, you know, a Disney whatever movie, I just, I thought I was going to see some garbage, just a little silly Disney garbage. So I was like, okay, whatever, let's check it out. I had, I think about 10 minutes in, I had to stop to do something and I, I got my phone out and I was like, I'm 10 minutes into Jungle Cruise and I'm pretty sure this is my favorite movie of the year. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I, the, the, the ending was a little bit more, you know, kind of what I expected, but the mm. movie in general, I just, I really dug this. This was funny. This was, uh, so the, the movies I'm going to compare it to, I feel like it was a combination of Pirates of the Caribbean, especially later on in the movie. That's very much Pirates. For sure. Also uh, National Treasure, with Nick Cage yep. and yep. Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Those are the movies oh, yeah. I, I, I'd say that this movie reminds me of best. And those are awesome movies that I can rewatch at any time. So Hell yeah. That that's why like I said th- this was a pleasant surprise, I put it like that. Um if mm-hmm. I would have gone into this expecting the best movie of the year, then I probably would have watched it differently and then I would have done the 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 thing I do where I kind of pick it apart and whatever on it. But even still, I just, I, I enjoyed watching this. I thought Emily Blunt was funny. I think she's a very good comedic actor. I think The Rock is made for movies like this, you know? And, oh, yeah. You know, the, the, the story does take some twists and turns. I feel like it, it's not the, the rote, you know, movie that I expected. And I was very pleasantly surprised. I very much enjoyed this movie, and I definitely recommend it. The home of ArtLink includes a cluster of desks covered in art material, biscuits, and cups of tea. 
I spoke to several participants and asked them how they felt about the class, beginning with Mark. It's good, it's fun, it's a nice area to chill out and relax and do some artwork. Uh, it's good to talk to everybody, good that everybody joins in and gets to know each other and that. I just want to keep going whenever the group's on. I look forward to it every week, every time I'm here. Duncan also added his two cents about the class. Yeah, I thought they were relaxed and uh, self-validating. I can validate myself and I don't have this opposition to what I am that I feel in a lot of other contexts. What I'm saying is I don't feel that <clears throat> me experimenting in that way is opposed by, by Les Leanne or by Danielle. Every class needs a teacher. The participants are guided by Leslie Ann, ArtLink's art therapist, who discussed the activities the class can do. Um, we do a wide range of um, different things such as drawing, painting, sculpture, clay, just various things. We kind of just tailor it to suit the individual needs and what um, the participants would like to do. So it's very varied.